You've probably seen at least one video exposing a terrible kick streamer by now, whether it be something about Chicken's video on Riot LOL that kicked all this off, Nax's video on Just Snags, Spree's video on Suspendas, or Jay Aubrey's and Willie Mac Show's videos on a bunch of different kick streamers, all of which are really good. And also during the writing of this script, Zerka and Heel Mike joined that list with too many videos covering their situation added to the list as well. Well, I'm throwing my hat into the ring and I'm going after a different terrible kick streamer. I certainly could go after Cheezer since, well, it would be easier if I just showed you some of the stuff he's done on stream. Is that a naked baby, bro? No, he's not naked. Get him naked. I want to see him naked. I'm GT, GT, I'll suck a baby's dick. I want to rape a fucking baby right now. Cool tomorrow. Damn. Yeah, get out of here before I stick my dick in you. Hurry up. Bro, what? she's 16, nigga. Jesus, she is Dude, 16, bro. If you think I take Jesus. this Discord bro. shit serious, come on, bro. I, got I wish I could even bro. leave, oh, but my PC is just fucking tripping. I'm 16. I have school tomorrow. I'm still on But break. it's 18 plus app. Like, there's creeps around here jerking off to girls. You gotta be careful. Oh, I am. Trust. I'm not am. careful enough, obviously. I got your ass. Okay. I don't believe you. But okay. And I might actually do that in the future, given that said moments were apparently enough to get some of his fan accounts to distance themselves from him. And Jay Aubrey himself said that there was enough stuff you could use to make an entire video on Cheezer. But I'm going after someone else. An ancient evil whose antics predate Kick, as well as a lot of the online streamers you probably watch. I'm talking about the Gunt himself, Ethan Ralph. I'm a pedophile. Yeah, Ronnie Ralph. <laughs> seen. Uh, somebody sent me this hat. Joshua Connor Moon is a kid diddler. Uh, <laughs> someone sent me that to mm. the to the PO box. Uh, here. Scripture, right? That have been going through councils um, that have been voted on in the past for whether or not they're included or not. Right? Wow. Gospels that showed scripture, right? That have been going through councils um, that have been voted on in the past for whether or not they're included or not. Right? Wow. Gospels that showed scripture, right? That By the way, I completely avow sending classmates of her kids um, all of her nude pictures. He's backing up traffic for miles. Do you understand? Whore, dumb, fucking bitch, whore. That's not what I fucking said. Why don't you repeat the joke, you nasty fucking skank? Why? Because it's too funny? Because it's funnier than anything you ever said in your miserable fucking career? Is that why? You fucking dirty bitch, little short, nasty looking decrepit, should have been exposed at birth looking bitch. Who the fuck are you talking to? Well, I'll let you know. The fucking legendary Ralph Amell, host of the Kill Stream, was here before you got here. He's gonna be here when you're gone. Fuck you, bitch. Now, what do you think, whore? <laughs> This video was one that I probably would have made at some point, but would have put on the back burner in the past, until the Gunt decided to go after the VTubing sphere as a whole, because his former friend turned enemy, Gator, happened to be a fan of VTubers. It got to the point where the Gunt himself claimed that Mori Kailopi was taking a break because of his harassment, even though I'm pretty sure she's used to dealing with criticism, even from people like Ralph. I mean, Brad taste in music is pretty harsh towards Mori's music and she's just ignored him. So I don't see why the Gunt, who has a much smaller audience, would be any more successful, even if his virtual is far more hateful. So seeing as how the quote-unquote Ralpha male is so good at dishing out hate, surely he'll take my video, which is actually backing up my claims with evidence, well, right? We'll see about that. Anyways, a few things to note before we begin. I am aware that the Gunt has a Kiwi Farms thread, and I am also aware that there are some people who make videos in the the same vein as mine, such as Lanza, the gamer from Mars, and definitely Bored Oranges, who use Kiwi Farms as a source. Well, I bring this up because when I started gathering info, I was able to find so much without touching the farms that I decided, as a challenge to myself, to try and see if I could make this video without using Kiwi Farms as a source. Because not only are there Twitter accounts and or YouTube channels that follow the gun's antics along with other lolcows or members of the sector, but there's at least one YouTube channel I 
I know of, Sunrise Productions, that is, for the most part, dedicated to covering the Gunt's antics alone. And sure enough, I was able to find more than enough information on the guy without having to use Kiwi Farms. Now, I did speak with some people and also use some stuff from people who probably have accounts on Kiwi Farms, but none of the links I will be providing in his sources will come from Kiwi Farms directly. Also, I'll only be focusing on the Gunt, so don't expect me to do a takedown of the rest of the internet blood sports scene. If you're unfamiliar with that term, the easiest way I can think to describe it is the same way Boblox described the scene. Namely, it's where unhinged grown men compete to see who can yell the most slurs at each other on live streams. I'm not going to go into details about the other members since this video isn't about IBS as a whole. Odds are that if you're a fan of the IBS scene, you're probably already familiar with most of, if not all of, the stuff I'm about to mention. But this video is more for those who aren't too familiar with the Gunt's antics. This will probably be a one-off, at most two videos, simply because I don't want to become the Eugene Eno Samuel for this guy. I'll also be referring to Ethan Ralph as the Gunt for the rest of this video, simply because I imagine that he'll get annoyed by me doing so. Lastly, remember that just because I use someone as a source does not automatically mean I endorse them. I know this might seem obvious, but I'm just repeating it for the people in the back. And as usual, don't harass anyone I mention. Anyways, let's get started. Never know. Maybe I'm going to pee in my trash can down here. The Gunt got his start during Gamergate, and I'm not going to elaborate much on that whole movement, mainly because most of the stuff I found on him actually comes after Gamergate. Also, the comment section is going to be a minefield if fans of the Gunt try to defend him, which will probably happen since he's got a very dedicated fan base. So I'd like to avoid also having Gamergate arguments polarize the comment section if I can, given that the topic is still pretty divisive. And if any of his fans do discover this, I have one serious question. Why do you like him? No, really, I'd actually like to hear. His show, The Kill Stream, is known for three things. Ralph's own content. Dude, I have no idea. I have tried. This is uh, something that's unanimous in, like, all of us Ethan Ralph fans, uh, like, followers of the LOL Cow, is his show is actually unwatchable. It's so fucking boring. Because all he does is he goes online. Yeah, sorry, he goes live. He opens up, like, Tucker Carlson or Fox News or CNN or something, and he just comments on it that's it but most of it is just silence he just sits there in silence with his stupid fucking sunglasses and he drinks and that's it and sometimes he calls the weather lady a <laughs> that's pretty much the depth <laughs> of his political commentary <laughs> that's literally what's he, what's, it he just... what's he got against the weather lady uh, well, uh, by leather, uh, weather lady, I mean just any woman on the news for some fucking reason. Oh. Hosting debates between online streamers, which are mostly political, and to be fair to the gun, I haven't heard anything about him being a bad debate host and having guests on just to talk. And most of his guests usually tend to be very right-wing, such as Milo Yiannopoulos. Um, I mean, you'd know all about kids liking dick, huh? Is that, isn't that... <laughs> Would I? Would I? Would, would I? Tell us more about that. Would I? Because that's a pretty big fucking allegation. Would I? Would you what? Would I know about that? Well, seems like it. Isn't that what you got cancelled for? No, I got cancelled for talking about the fact that I was a victim of clerical sexual abuse. I was... So about, like, little boys liking dick, right? Who also got his start during Gamergate, and if you want to know more about him, I'd recommend checking out the Cavernicles video on him and Ali Alexander. Stop the Steel Organizer apologizes after being accused of asking teen boys for, you know, eggplant pictures, some revealing photographs, some sussy images. It has come to light that this is a huge issue. Now, let's read a little bit. A key figure in the pro-Trump Stop the Steal campaign has apologized after being accused of asking teen, po teen boys for sexual pictures. Guys! I've made a severe and repeated lack of judgment. <laughs> God, you think um, you think when he comes back, he's gonna be doing one of those uh, YouTuber "I'm sorry" videos, like him sitting in his room on like a like on like a near the ottoman. He's got his dog with him, takes a deep breath. He's crying. You can tell he's crying. His eyes are red. How sad. 
He also has a lot of really anti-woke content creators on, such as Yellow Flash, It's a Gundam, and fellow lolcal The Quartering. He also apparently had the website Odyssey, which he got banned from, on as a guest, and I'm not really sure how that's supposed to work, unless he means he had the management of that site on. He's also had Oneasy on, on to tell his side of the story, and... I'm going to guess that Onision was just that desperate to find someone who would let him tell his side, because I have no idea why the Gunt would have Onision on otherwise. I would mention some more recent guests, but the guest list hasn't actually been updated in a while. I say this because I recall the commentary channel Lyrics mentioning that he had been on the kill stream, yet when I went to check the guest list, Lyrics wasn't listed there. Also, Gonzalo Lira, also known as Coach Red Pill, who passed away in a Ukrainian prison in in January 2024, is still referred to as if he's still alive. Then again, considering the Gunt thought Gonzalo Lira was dead when Gonzalo Lira was still alive at one point, perhaps the Gunt has adopted a stance of, he's not dead until I see the body, in regards to Gonzalo Lira. And there's also a fair number of pages that have syntax errors, so if the Gunt sees this, I would suggest you get someone to fix your semi-broken website. One of the people he collabed with quite frequently during the Gamergate days was Mr. Medicare. However, it later became apparent that the two had very different views of each other since Mr. Medicare began to make fun of Ralph, which pissed off Ralph. I should probably mention that Ralph pretty much views anyone making fun of him as a declaration of war, so he probably views this video as one as well. Anyways, in relation to that, one unintentional cell phone he made was on an episode of Boulder Talk Radio by Matt Jarbo. In that episode, which also had Mr. Medicare present, Ralph basically admitted that without Mr. Medicare's presence, he didn't get nearly as many views as he did when Medicare was a co-host. Which, while Ralph might not realize it, basically means that Ralph admitted that his content is actually so bad that it only gets views if he has someone interesting on. I went out for pizza without me, and I'm angry about it. So I'm gonna win this round, and I'm gonna pee. If I don't win this round, I'm gonna pee in my own- Now, let's talk about some of the stuff that people make fun of him for that I couldn't really fit anywhere else. The gun is addicted to a lot of things. He's a smoker, which on its own is something I normally wouldn't bring up, but I might as well since I'm talking about his other addictions. He's also a big alcoholic with Maker's Mark being a common choice of drink, but the thing he's most known for being addicted to is Xanax. There's an entire period of his online presence called the Pill Stream for a reason. I have also found a clip that supposedly shows him doing meth, and while I haven't found a clip that's a smoking gun, it's generally agreed that he has also done cocaine in the past. So I'm going to say that if you can think of something addictive, there's a good chance that Ralph had an addiction to it in the past if he doesn't currently have one. I'd normally say I hope he goes to rehab and breaks those addictions, but even if he wanted to do that, and that in and of itself is a whole can of worms I'm not gonna open, I'd question if he could actually afford to go to rehab given some of his other poor financial decisions. Speaking of which, there's also the Gun's trips to Portugal, which are already questionable decisions since he owed child support payments. The first time he went there, which he apparently did despite one of his rivals, Andy Worski, who is of Portuguese heritage, it's from what I understand. I'm not sure how, how his brain thought that through, since Worski isn't banned from entering Portugal, and in fact, from what I understand, Worski has actually been to Portugal a few times. Anyways, that trip it led to Ralph getting beaten up by four Portuguese men, with one of them apparently being a pimp, and he got beat up so badly that his face was deformed, and he had to wear sunglasses inside all the time just so he could hide the damage to his face. After returning to the US, against all common sense, he decided to return to Portugal for a second trip. This led to the Gunt getting beaten up by another rival commentator, Backwards Internet, Backwards Internet also being part of the internet blood sports scene. Yeah, fucking a bit of What? Huh? Fucking What are you coming out before you, little dickhead? You fat little gun shit. Yeah, that's right, bleeding. Look at you. Fuck you, bitch. Fast our days, bitch! Fuck you, bitch. Now, after the gun's first trip to Portugal, Keemstar enters the picture. He decided to reach out to the gun and Mr. Worski to arrange one of his celebrity boxing matches. Now, Mr. Worski was actually very pragmatic and was actually willing to agree to Keemstar's terms that the two abstain from using hate speech on their shows in the lead up to the fight, since that would mean that they could get sponsors for the fight and it would actually get money for both of them. However, the gun refused to do so, claiming that in his own words, he would be quote-unquote cuck 
blocking his content. Never mind the fact that the Gunt couldn't just put the killstream on hiatus until after the boxing match, but I suspect the actual reason, however, was because, well, quite simply, the Gunt knew that Worski, who is in much better shape than the Gunt, would wipe the floor with the Gunt, and he was just looking for an excuse to back out. I have no idea why the Gunt didn't just refuse to fight in the first place, but this exchange ended with the Gunt blocking Keemstar. I don't have a bathroom down here. Oh, we made it. I was ready to pee my- Let's talk about the Gunt's sexual deviancy. The Gunt is notable for having one of the first convictions for revenge porn under Virginia state law. Said conviction was the result of sharing a sex tape he made with his then-girlfriend, who later gave birth to one of his kids without her knowledge or consent. I should also probably mention that when the tape was made, she was like barely 18 years old. Said tape is also the origin of his nickname, The Gunt due to his large gut. I'm not exactly sure why that particular term was chosen, unless it's supposed to be a portman and two of gut and this word I'm showing on screen. It's also notable for being something he pled no contest to. If you're unfamiliar with that term, basically it's when you admit that you're not guilty, but you admit that there is no way you could win because of the overwhelming amount of evidence, so you're just going to save everyone the trouble and skip straight to sentencing. Also, and I'm not making this up, the Gunt is a cuck, and I mean that in the literal sense. He's on record as having hired a male prostitute that he watched give his wife back to her service. Or in other words, he paid someone to cuck him. No, really, this isn't my words. The Gunt himself admitted this. Uh, and I'll say it right here live on air. Uh, if you think you can shame me or... Um, uh, you know, put me in the ground. You can't, motherfucker. Uh, and, and, and she enjoyed every minute of it because she's a whore. Um, you know, so I, I can tell some things too. Um, you know, that she got fucked up the ass by a fucking mech and gigolo with no condom <laughs> with no condom by the way now it would be one thing if the gunt was just letting random strangers come in and do stuff to his wife but hiring a prostitute just for that purpose is honestly a new level of pathetic it would also be one thing if the gunt had hired a male prostitute to have a threesome with him and his wife but no he actually paid money to get cut you know considering that the gunt has been divorced at least once before yes he found not one but two women who are willing to have sex with someone like him i'm wondering if the reason for doing this was because of insecurity but if there's one positive i can take away from learning about this the gunt is proof that there's someone out there for everyone there's also a video out there of the Gunt jerking off to an underage teen. Now, I'm not going to show this clip because, well, another channel, Sunrise Media, uploaded the clip in question. It was not a particularly graphic clip before you ask. It was about as graphic as DSP's incident where he forgot he was streaming, let's just put it that way. It just showed what was on Ralph's screen and the Gunt was making sounds as to what he was doing. We fortunately did not actually see him jerking off. And the Gunt filed a DMCA against the channel, which got the original channel suspended. Considering this clip was made before Kick was formed, perhaps it was a sign that he was a good fit for that site alongside such valuable streamers as Riot LOL and Just Snags. And yes, I was being extremely sarcastic when I was referring to those two. It also makes this hat he purchased somewhat of an unintentional cell phone, since all it takes is a quick crop and it comes across as him describing himself. In fact, that's what the channel Sunrise Productions wound up doing for quite a few thumbnails. And as I mentioned in the montage, Joshua Connor Moon, that's the real name of Null, the founder of Kiwi Farms. Don't know why Ralph would want to piss off someone like that. Considering everything we've learned so far, I'm honestly surprised the Gunt hasn't had Scott Ritter, or rather Delmar for fun, on the kill stream as a guest. Speaking of kick, let's talk about the Gunt managing to do the impossible. Get them to perma ban him, as well as his bans on some other sites while we're at it. I, I, I'll, I don't have a toilet down here. All I have is a drain in the floor. I feel like we're gonna have to use it though. I feel like we're gonna have to use it. 
I gotta pee so bad. Now, given how controversial the gun has been, it would be inevitable before he would get banned on sites he used to stream the kill stream. There is one site he hasn't been banned from that's notable, and that site is Twitch. But that's only because he's never actually created an account on Twitch. I actually had a hard time finding out if the gun ever had a Twitch account, since streamer bans didn't have anything, and I didn't find anything in Google. Eventually, I just gave up and got in contact with the YouTuber Adentum, who documents lolcows such as the Gunt, as well as Cyrax and Chris Chan, and sure enough, just as I suspected, he confirmed that the Gunt never had a Twitch account. Honestly, I kind of wish that the Gunt would create a Twitch account for the kill stream just because of the reactions people would have if the streamer band's Twitter account ever posted a tweet announcing his banning, which would probably happen the second he got partner status. His YouTube ban was after the Heal stream, where he raised money for charity. Now, you might be wondering why he got banned for that, of all things. Well, the devil is in the details, because said stream involved raising money by reading out super chats. And given the kind of audience the Gunt has cultivated, you can probably guess that said super chats were very anti-Semitic, with stuff like Holocaust denial and celebration of the then recent Christchurch massacre. Not only did St. Jude's, who the Gunt was doing the stream to raise money for, refuse his donations, and it was a pretty significant amount of money if I'm not mistaken, this actually caught the attention of the Wall Street Journal, who did a an article on the heel stream, which unsurprisingly led to YouTube banning the kill stream and the Ralph retort permanently from their site. Now, I haven't been able to find the actual reason for each of his bans from Kick, since Kick doesn't release the reasons why they ban a streamer, but I do have some pretty educated guesses. His first ban, which was on his debut stream of all things, was due to him doxing multiple people. Don't know who, since I would rather not risk doxing them myself. His second ban was officially for hate speech, but it's widely believed that it was unofficially because he had a donation goal of, and I swear I'm not making this up, showing his dick on stream. No, really, I'm not kidding. His third ban is because he encouraged fans to false flag another streamer for swatting. Now, I actually don't know what his fourth ban was for, since I found two different claims that I would say are equally plausible. One claimed it was because he threatened Brittany Venti, who is mixed race on stream during Black History Month. Another claimed it was because he threatened his ex on stream. I'd say that both are equally likely, given what we know of the Gunt, and it's also possible that both were the reason he got banned, since the two tweets I saw were sent around the same time, or at least within 24 hours of each other. His fifth ban is one that I haven't found the exact reason for, and no tweets speculating as to why have been made, but I do remember reading that around the time this happened, he supposedly spread revenge porn of Andy Worski, who does have pretty good relations with Kick's management from what I've heard, so that may be why. They may have just decided he was too much trouble to justify bringing back. Now, I was going to say that I am surprised that Kick hasn't permabanned him, but then I went to check his kick page, and I got a 404 page. And while the streamer band's Twitter account only shows Twitch bands, kinda surprised it doesn't also show YouTube bands at the very least, it turns out that there's a kick counterpart to streamer bands as well, and that shows that the Ralph Retort's most recent ban is still in effect. So I guess kick did give him a perma ban, or rather an expulsion, as they apparently call it, after all. Good job, kick. He also got banned from this site called Cozy TV, which is a streaming service owned by Nick Fuentes, a neo-Nazi who is very controversial in his own right. Recently, Nick forgot his stream was still running and started watching gay porn, which he later claimed was Mossad hacking his stream. Never mind the fact that if that was the case, why would they wait until after the stream instead of doing it in the middle or before? I could probably make an entire video on Nick, but for now, if you want to get caught up on who Nick Fuentes is, I'd recommend checking out Lazy Bedhead's video. However, his ban from Cozy TV was because he had a falling out with Nick, not because of any streams he did on that site. Like, if anything, his streams were well within that site's terms of service if you want an idea of what Cozy TV's content is like. I'm just bringing it up here because it's relevant to the topic. Nowadays, he mostly streams on Rumble and his own website. I don't know if Rumble will ever ban him before you ask. He's also been banned from the payment services Buy Me A Coffee, as well as Patreon. Now, the Gunt claimed his Patreon ban was because he was a conservative, but given that site also banned Onision, I'm not gonna get into him because that's an entirely different can of worms I do not have time to open on this stream, and Onision's views are more or less wing than the Gunts. I'm inclined to say that the Gunt is wrong for obvious reasons. Um, get up! No!
The gun is very happy to dox people he doesn't like. One example is Brianna Wu, who I'm not going to say much about other than she's very controversial. Go watch Kui Man or President Sunday if you want to see someone do a takedown of her. This likely tied back to the days of Gamergate since Brianna was pretty active in that sphere during those days. And I wasn't able to find much about his antics during those days, so I'm not going to go into detail. In fact, there's a good chance that if he sees this video, he'll try and dox me. Another example of someone he doxed was the VTuber Pipkin Pippa. More on her in a second, but in Pippa's case, well, he actually shared what is very likely a false document. I say this because Adentum made a whole video on the feud between the Gunt and Pippa, and he went into more detail on that doxing, but basically, the photo in said dox was revealed to belong to this random Russian girl who liked to draw MLP, and given that something so false was part of the dox, you really can't trust anything else in said dox. He's also doxed several rival streamers. I already mentioned how he got banned from Kick one time because he doxed several streamers on that site in his debut. But another example is that during the time he went Scorched Earth on the aforementioned Cozy TV, where he doxed literally everyone who streamed on that site. It was also notable for being one of the few times the Gunst detractors actually changed gears and rooted for him. And to be honest, as someone who hates Nick Fuentes, I would be lying if I said I didn't find it funny. I don't approve of it, but it was funny. Yet when controversial comics artist Stone Toss got doxed, he revealed himself to be a hypocrite and complained about it, suggesting he only dislikes it when he, he sees it happening to people he likes. So, Gunt, which is it? Either it's okay to dox people, in which case you should delete that tweet about Stone Toss's doxing, or it isn't. In that case, you have a bunch of old kill streams to delete. Oh my god. I just peed in my basement. No, not in the kitty litter. Just, uh, in the drain. Now, if you're a VTuber fan, you're probably already familiar with the gun's attacks against VTubers as a whole, likely because his former friend turned detractor, Gator, is a fan of VTubers, and I already mentioned his attacks on Mori at the beginning, which I'm pretty sure if Cover Corp ever found out about, they'd bring the hammer down on him. Gun has also gone after another VTuber named Iki Pion Pion, who's an Australian VTuber, who had the misfortune of having Gator as one of her fans. In fact, finding out about that was what kicked off the gun's decision to attack VTubing as a whole. From what I can tell, Kiki isn't particularly notable otherwise. She doesn't have a particularly big following, and she's not a corporate VTuber. But what if I told you there was another pink-haired corporate female VTuber who the gun had a special hatred of? If you're a fan of Adentum, you probably already know who I'm talking about, but if you don't, I'm talking in about, of course, Pipkin Pippa. Pippa is probably the one VTuber who the gun hates the most. It's mainly because Pippa made fun of the gun's trip to Portugal on on her stream, which I'll show footage of now. There's a lot going on. She went to Portugal. She went to Portugal, Jeff. And then so then some of the natives did not take well. There was this one tweet that said, like if I see you in my in my hometown in Portugal, I'll beat you up. And then it happened. Ralph and Mel just tweeted about you. No fucking way. <laughs> not oh. I'm afraid the fact that you do says more about your character than it does mine. As a result of Ralph getting insanely angry with Pippa, this set into motion a chain of events that caused Space Connect to actually change their rules and forbid Pippa from talking about people like the Gun by name. Part of the reason why the Gun has a hatred of Pippa may also be because, in the words of the Clipper Azihara channel, who has clipped a bunch of Pippa's content as well as a bunch of other Phase VTubers, the Gun's ex, Pansu, is basically a failed version of Pippa. And Pippa did a stream where she broke down Pansu's addition to Hollow Live. I would actually show that here, but I haven't been able to find it. So anything the Gunt could use against Pippa, uh, Pippa could use against, against the Gunt because he married someone like Pippa. If you want a more in-depth breakdown of Pippa's beef with the Gunt, Adentum made a whole video that I'll recommend and I'll link in the description. There's also his former associate Flamenco, who himself is quite the controversial individual, and I'd suggest you go watch Lanz's video for more info. But given that I don't really see the Gunt talk about the VTubing aspect whenever he talks about Flamenco, at least on Twitter, he might have mentioned it on the kill stream, but I'm not gonna watch that. I'm going to assume it's a non-issue for the Gunt. There's another VTuber who I'm not mentioning by name that has covered the Gunt's antics, and I spoke with her, and because she didn't want to deal with the harassment, I have opted not to mention her by name, but the Gunt is at least aware of her since he blocked her on Twitter after she covered him. If she sees the 
this, she probably knows that I'm talking about her, but I'm not going to cover this anymore. Oh, and before anyone asks, no, I do not hold Pippa responsible for the gun's attacks on YouTubers. I could just as easily see a timeline where Kirsch, or alternatively, I'm the one who made fun of the gun, and he wound up going after the whole VTubing sphere in the long run. It's really something where he himself is at fault for this sort of thing. Very end of the day, at least you can take a little solace in knowing that you're not Ethan Ralph. You are not Ethan Ralph, and that is something to walk home with in a big fucking video. Well, that was certainly an interesting experience researching this video. I learned a lot more about the gun than I probably would have otherwise, and I also feel a lot more confident in myself right now. Mainly because no matter how bad I feel, I can always take pleasure in knowing that I'm nowhere near as much of a laughing stock as the gun. Anyways, thank you for watching. I'm not sure where I'll go from here in regards to this subject, since it all depends on how the gun responds. I'll be more than happy to make a follow-up if he does, because given what I was able to find on him for this video, I can only imagine just what I'll be able to find for the next. Special shoutouts to AF Streamwatch and Dedentum, who documented the gun's antics, and also helped me with some research I couldn't find any answers to on my own. In particular, Adentum has documented the gun's lore a lot more than I have, and odds are that if he doesn't already have a video on Ralph's with the whole VTubing sphere by now, he's got one in the works. And playing us off, I give you the gun's latest hit, Welcome to the Crack Shack. I'm Andreas Werbel, and I'll see you on my next assignment. Hey everyone, post-editing Andreas here. Once again, thanks for watching. Just gonna give you a heads up about the next video. Oh, but before I do that, there's just so much I could have covered on this guy, but I decided to put my foot down somewhere, so I probably will cover a lot of different stuff if I do make a follow-up. And if I do make a follow-up, it's not gonna be right away. I do have other videos in the works, although what one comes next will depend on if I hit 100 subscribers after this, since I did commit to a particular video if I reach that milestone. So I am probably going to take a bit longer to make the next one than I did to make this one, and so just be patient. But yeah, anyways, thanks for watching and just giving you guys a heads up and also saying this so I don't risk a copyright claim from YouTube. But yeah, anyways, once again, see you next assignment. Later.